kitchen. Today we are filming my spring seasonal shop, which is something that we're doing every quarter this year. We've done an autumn seasonal shop already. The idea is that I pick out some of the ingredients that I'm cooking with right now in my kitchen and I'm sharing a bit of my fruit and veggie shop with you today. So this is not by any means a sort of all-inclusive list of everything that you can eat now. These are just the sorts of things that I like to cook with. And you'll find a lot of these ingredients are on the Mimi's World website and used in lots of my recipes. Um, spring, interestingly, is a bit of a lonely month for fruit and vegetables in some ways. March, I think um, there aren't a massive array of ingredients to choose from if you compare this to the autumn shop. And certainly in terms of fruit, there isn't much to choose from, but there is lots of delicious green vegetables. It's almost as if Mother Nature has responded to the austerity of winter and bought us all these nutrient-dense, iron-rich vegetables to get us through until um, late spring starts. So this is a sort of early spring selection. My children wouldn't necessarily eat things like lettuce very regularly, but it's just to give you some ideas of things that you could include in your family cooking. And this lettuce was so amazing in the shop, I had to include it. So I've got a whole mixture of things and I will show you what's in my shopping bag. So these are some of my new reusable food shopping bags. I'm going to do a separate piece on these because they're fantastic for food shopping if you're looking to use less plastic. Um, there's a the kind of breathable version and also um, the sort of more solid copy version if you're wondering what these are. But in them, I have lots of spring greens. So spring greens are really a whole array. You'll find different varieties that are kind of crosses between spinach and cabbage, which is exactly sort of what this one is. But spring greens are a fantastic way of basically just increasing the nutrition in your cooking. And I would use something like this. You could shred it and put it in a stir fry. It would also be beautiful in a soup. Um, you could add it into pasta dishes. You can just finely shred it. Um, and they are delicious. Also at this time of year is watercress, um, which is a lovely English ingredient. Really, really nutritious. Um, this is quite difficult with children, so I might include it in something like a soup, for example, but it's definitely worth buying because it has a fantastic taste. Um, and so there is some lovely watercress. The other thing that is delicious at this time of year is herbs. So we're beginning to get all of the fresh herbs. And in winter, herbs can get really expensive. And I don't often cook with what I call fresh spring herbs during that time of year. So you'll find lovely parsley, dill. I've got some lovely mint here. Really good for parents who need um, lovely tea. Keep them going during the day. Um, and um, dill, tarragon. This is all a way of adding flavor into your cooking. And I think also when you're cooking for small children, you're trying to, well, if they're under one, you don't use salt. And if they are over one, trying to cook with less salt. And herbs and citrus are a really great way of adding flavor without adding in salt to a lot of your cooking. So fresh herbs are really worth um, cooking with more. What I would say is you can find that you are left with sort of leftovers of things like fresh herbs and they are an expensive ingredient. So sometimes what I do is I will finely chop them and then freeze them, maybe carve in a little bit of olive oil, and then I can throw them into my cooking and try not to waste them. So I have more spring greens. This is a really lovely little cabbage. Um, we've just done a recipe on the Mimi's Bowl website with a lovely bubble and squeak, which is coming for spring. And these spring greens would be amazing in that. So you're just using lovely new potatoes that are crushed, mixing in the spring greens, and then frying them in little potato cakes and warming them through in the oven. Um, and my children love eating this that way. We've also got spring onions, which are just the most versatile ingredient. Spring onions are also a little bit of a parent hack because you can use them in replacement of onions and they just basically need to cook for about a minute. So sometimes I will just chop a bit of a spring onion in lieu of chopping a proper onion, give it a minute and then start the recipe. So they're very useful. Asparagus. So asparagus is really the sort of queen of spring vegetables and um, if you love asparagus you'll be getting excited that it's nearly asparagus season. Um, my children do really like asparagus um, and I've tried to share my excitement about asparagus with them. Look for English varieties, it's a really short season. Um, I only really buy asparagus at this time of year. My worst nightmare is sort of winter asparagus that's been grown really far away that looks quite sad in the supermarket. So if you want to try real asparagus, this is the time of year that's coming up to do that. Um, and the way my children like to eat it is we will have them with dippy eggs. So I will give them some asparagus spears that are lightly steamed and some toast sticks and we'll dip them into boiled eggs and they love them that way. So that's my top tip with asparagus. One of the other brilliant spring ingredients are lovely English 
seasonal new potatoes. There are lots of different varieties. There's the very famous Jersey Royal variety. Um, they just have the most delicious flavour and new potatoes for small children are just the most versatile ingredient, even just as they are. But as I said, I crush them and I might use them for something like potato cakes, but in the spring I will always buy a bag of these each week because they're delicious. And what's lovely about them is they've got a very thin skin, so you can just boil them and eat them as they are and a lot of the nutrition is under the skin. There's no need to peel them, which makes them very, very easy to cook with. So that's all our lovely new potatoes. We've also got some spring peas, which are great with kids. This is exactly the kind of activity that you can get your children involved with in the kitchen. Small hands make really good, cheap labour for peeling peas, and I remember doing it in the kitchen with my parents when I was little. Um, there's nothing like fresh peas straight from the pod, and you can pod them together on the weekends, make it into a game, and then hopefully encourage them to try some fresh peas. Um, of course I use frozen peas. I think frozen peas are a brilliant ingredient. Um, and they're great. But at this time of year, it might be fun to try a fresh pea um, and really champion them in your cooking. The last of the vegetables in here, and this is probably a little bit contentious with some children, is broccoli, particularly sprouting broccoli, and this is the time of year for it. Whether your children love or hate broccoli, um, we all know it's really good. So whether you call it dinosaur trees or broccoli, um, it's really good to try and encourage them to eat it. And with all things, if you all eat it together, it kind of normalizes it. My, my daughter isn't mad about broccoli, my son loves it, but we do all eat it. And this purple sprouting broccoli might be a fun way of your child exploring food through color. So sprouting broccoli has to be in the spring top picks. So finally, the two fruits that are good at this time of year, and I promise when we get into summer, fruits will become a little bit more exciting. Bananas, which are just the ultimate on-the-go snack for kids. My children probably have a banana every day. Um, they're just so useful and great. The amount of bananas that I buy in this household is insane. Um, and then the other fruit that is good this time of year is the sort of forced rhubarb. Um, so these are the rhubarb stalks. They make really good fruit crumbles and fruit compotes, so you can stew them in the way that I stew apples and pears a lot in the autumn. Um, so this might be an ingredient that you might want to try. Um, rhubarb crumble is a classic, but I thought worth including it in spring just to add a little bit more variety to the fruit selection. Um, and if anything, the color is just beautiful. So um, I'm going to add that into my top 10. You may not find lettuce as fabulous as this one, but lettuce is also so good at this time of year. In France, they do this delicious dish where they cook um, little lettuce, like little gems, in lovely chicken stock with fresh peas. And we don't really cook lettuce in the UK in quite the same way, but it is a delicious recipe and one that I'll be sharing on Mimi's Bowl um, this spring. So that's one of the reasons I've included it in here. But hopefully that gives you lots of choice. Um, there's a lot of green anyway at this time of year. So get out to your local farmer's market or green grocer and happy shopping.